What's up, everybody? Good morning. It's Sunday. Not only is it a Sunday morning, but it happens to be Mother's Day. So, in honor of that, this is a special stream for Mother's Day. I had some things scheduled, some special guests. I was going to do my new segment, Man on the Street, which is going to be a new thing on Sundays during the Sunday show where I have an outside correspondent call in and they give their take on what they're seeing in the world around them at that moment or, you know, whatever's on their mind at that moment. But uh, before we get everything started today, I have a few sponsors today, which is kind of special. First and foremost, I want to give a shout out to Array Gaming. Go over to ArrayGaming.com, check out the brand new gamer merch for you or the gamer in your life. Use code Tomahawk, which is good till Wednesday. I'm going to switch it up again. Uh, I don't like the code, so I'm going to switch it up. We're going to go Tomahawk till Wednesday. Tomahawk gets you 10% off all orders at checkout. All orders over $75 receive free shipping in the U.S. That's ArrayGaming.com. Use code Tomahawk. Good till Wednesday. I also want to give a shout out to today's medical sponsor of the show, which is Aqua Dulce Organics. You can check out their products at www.ado, capital A-D-O, hemp.com. That's Aqua Dulce Organics, www.ado, hemp. Dot com. Shout out to them. And our final sponsor of the day, I want to give a shout out to Black Rifle Coffee. Go over to blackriflecoffee.com forward slash RTD. Get your first order going. Free shipping on club orders. All orders, when you join the club, you save 20% off. There's premium monthly giveaways, 40 plus partner di uh, uh, discount accounts. Uh, companies like SIG, Vortex, Refactor, Cryptex, Liberty Safe, so on and so on, they're all associated. That's BlackRifle.com, BlackRifleCoffee.com forward slash RTD. Those are my sponsors. I also want to, since it's Mother's Day, I have a small list of mothers that deserve a shout out. So right now, um, first and foremost, I'm going to give a shout out to Steph the Cuervo Queen because she is battling... COVID-19 right now. The fucking scamdemic has hit her hard. Uh, she's in the chat right now. She's saying that her youngest is wicked sick. Uh, her brother called me this morning. Her mom's in the ER. She tore her bicep. Didn't tell anyone for three days. That's a tough lady. That's a tough lady right there. I have a torn bicep myself. It, it fucking sucks. It's partial tear. So I can imagine. Man, respect. Uh, Steph says she just wants to sleep for like a month, just everything go away. So, uh, yeah, she likes my idea, man on the street. Yeah, I got a couple of people. Since I can't get in the outside world, my social anxiety is through the fucking roof, which is just crazy in itself. But I don't want to get off track, so shout out to Steph, the Cuervo Queen. Happy Mother's Day to you, because I know she's been battling her sickness. She's been supposed to get to her daughter's... Um, baby shower and uh, she hasn't been able to because she's been laid out sick so hopefully she can recover quick get through that shout out to her um, I have a couple more moms that are out there right now that to me are like super moms one in particular her name's Kira uh, I want to give a shout out to her um, she's a single mom doing her thing and I mean she's just putting in the work so shout out to Kira I just want to give a shout out to Susan she deserves it. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my stepmom because if I don't, uh, I'm going to fucking hear it later. So shout out to my stepmom, Margie. And uh, shout out to uh, one of my favorite moms who died a few years back. She, she, was, she was more of a mom than my real mom to me. And I only knew her for probably maybe 10 years. But she, she treated me like one of her own. So shout out to Phil Ann. May she rest in peace. Um, like I said, I have a short list of moms. You know what I mean? And uh, last but not least, right now on the top of my head, I'm going to give a shout out to my roommate's mom, Debbie. 
Um, she's awesome. She, she hooks me up. She takes care of me when I'm really fucked up in the head, which is a lot lately. And uh, I've been having a lot of health issues, and she's been helping me out and trying to push me to get to these doctor's appointments and stuff when I just want to give up. And she's always there. So shout out to these people. First and foremost, right off the bat, love you guys. Also, shout out to my boy, Lyle's mom, Candy. She's awesome. Another one of those moms out there that deserves some recognition. So much love to all you. Um, all right. Now we got all that mushy shit out of the way. This show, since it is Mother's Day, um, I, I may have somebody come in here and there. I don't know. I, I'm just kind of free willing it. Yesterday was a really, really, really super bad day for me. So bad that I really didn't even jump on Red Dead. I tried to keep my streak going. Um, my daily streak was ended yesterday. And I had to start out brand new fresh. By the time I logged on, um, I realized what time it was. And I was, I think, about three or four minutes late. And they did the reset last night. So I have to start everything fresh. I had at least one daily every day since December 17th. So it was kind of like a knock. It was like a like a, like a a liver shot when you're in a fight. I don't know if anybody's been in a fight. You get one of them good liver shots, man. That's it. Fight's over. And you just kind of want to quit. But I think I'm going to do a um, quick show. And I, I might even put it on YouTube today. So it'll be up later since it is Mother's Day. And... Um, and I kind of want to trash my real mom, but then that, that might make me re look real bad. So, you know, as you can see, I have to start my streak all over again. So let's look at the dailies. I did some of them last night since I was on, um, just to pass the time. I'm not going to read them all to you because every time I try to read, I always fuck it up. Because, you know, I'm fucking st 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 stupid. Uh, all right, yeah, let's go get some moonshine done and do that. And I don't really give a fuck about anything really today. Uh, I did some weird shit. Oh, yeah. Past couple shows, I'm trying to um, show you guys that when you go in here to your progress. Um, I need to pet Nakoma before he has a shit fit. Go into your progress, you scroll over there, you'll see the awards, and there's different um, boxes for each award, right? So, you know, you just go into them, and when you can reset some of them, um, you get gold. You get a little bit of gold out of that. So, I've been working a lot on my sharpshooter stuff because I've been doing free aim, and I finally got the revolver caught up with the pistol. I mean, it's a little ahead, just a little. I think by, yeah, by six. So, um, yeah, we're going with that now. And I'm doing free aim. And then, uh, la 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 la. Uh, today's cards, we are rocking painted black as always. This is the number one card. As you can see, I have every card unlocked, but I only mess with paint it black. Uh, I should be working on slow and steady because it's one of the better ones too, one of the meta cards. But my style of play, I'm just really comfortable with paint it black once I got it down. So we got paint it black. Paint it black. Um, right now I'm using Gunslinger's Choice because um, I like the double fist. Um, I was using Winning Streak for a while. Basically, everything else is, is, is trash to me. The only th three yellow cards that you should be working on are Sharpshooter, Winning Streak, and Gunslinger's Choice. Everything else is just kind of like extra credit as far as I'm concerned. Um, All right, I'm just this is good for people that like to use sniper rifles and, you know, scoped rifles. Uh, PBP Cat's favorite card basically is, is this one right here. But uh, I was using Winning Streak a lot because I like to cycle my weapons. But lately, I've just been on this thing where I just want to double fist. So I've been double fisting using Gunslinger's Choice. And then uh, 
I've been switching between Iron Lung and Peak Condition depending upon what mission I'm doing. Um, sometimes I'll put in Eye for an Eye. So it's just, it's basically player preference. Um, green cards are where it's at. So if you're a newer player and um, you're, you're looking at cards, um, you know, doing the green cards is, is probably the way to go. <laughs> green cards, the health cards, I should probably say. Would you do the green cards? It's probably the better ways to go, you know? So I like the green cards, they have all the powers and you do not know that they just they're very good for you. So like Yes. The green card, okay? Okay. And then the blue cards is the defensive cards. Uh, it just depends on what you want out of this one. I basically just use fool me once. It's, it's it's the main card, meta card. A lot of people are using never without one because, you know, they wear hats. But I'm native. My character is native. I don't wear hats. I wish they had bandanas, though. It would be cool if I could wear, like, a bandana or something around, you know. But, hey, man, fuck it. Or some war paint. Sorry for the calm issues. I, you know, for those of you who've been with the show, you know I'm having... I'm rolling... Low budget as fuck when I'm doing this fucking show. So it's it's all it's fucking basic bitch shit. Alright. So yeah. These are the cards here. I I rock this one sometimes when I'm doing um deliveries and I have friends with me because it helps everybody out. And I know that they're not rocking it, so I'll rock that when you know. But yeah, those are the cards of the day. I'm gonna use Iron Lung because, you know. And then uh, weapons of the day are, uh, I took short barrel on everything, so I went back to the Mauser, we're rocking Mauser, short barrel, Lamat, short barrel, and then the bow, and then let me get my tomahawks ready here, there we go, and then the custom Kniff, take a little Tonskis, got my dog skis, Nakoma, you sure that Nakoma's... Got fleas? Named after a real dog I had when I was a little, when I was a little youngster. Um, funny story about Nakoma. It says it's Mother's Day. I might as well tell that story. Ha ha ha! Perfect. All right, so Nakoma was a little bit bigger than this guy here. He was a pretty big guy. He was um, a Pointer St. Bernard mix. So you can imagine the size of that motherfucker. Anyways, he's a big guy. Uh, you know, my, my chores and responsibilities where I had to walk the dogs regularly, take them out on walks and you know, make sure that they were fed. They had water twice a day, did the damn thing, you know. And I was I was a little punk kid, so I think back at it, I wish I had more time with them and was more responsible, but I did a lot of half-assed shit and did it, you know, lazily, and, you know, like an idiot. But um, Nakoma was a good dog, and... Uh, we had a chain, dog chain. It wasn't like a leash, it was a chain. And um, it had a leather hand strap that went around your wrist and then you can hold it, right? And then Nakoma had, he had like a chain collar. Because he had already been in a fight with a pit bull. Um, he had fought our neighbor's pit bull like the winter before uh, this incident I'm about to explain to you took place. So, I take this guy on a walk. He's already been in a fight. Thinks he's tough shit. Uh, sees another dog. And uh, he's pulling on me. He's pulling on me. And I'm fighting him. I'm fighting him. I'm trying to get him to heal. And, you know, just get him. But he, the dog's really only answered to my dad. Because my dad was uh, security... Uh, policeman in the in the Air Force and he worked with the canine and shit so he had trained the dogs and they basically only listened to him um, so he wouldn't he wouldn't listen okay, to me so you know and he ended up breaking him. loose and he took off and I didn't know what to do so I went home um, you know, told my mom hey fucking Nakoma got loose and took off on me and She was like, oh, god damn it, you know, this is a big, 
big ordeal. She got all pissed off. She jumps in the car. She takes off. She tells me to wait at the house. So I'm waiting at the house. I'm just chilling. About an hour goes by. She comes back with Nakoma. And uh, both of them are all muddy and shit. And he's got his collar off and everything. And she goes and throws him into the bathroom so she can give him a bath. But before she gives him a bath, and because she's angry that you know he got away and whatnot, she decided to use the dog chain that was still attached to the collar as a belt and then proceed to beat the fuck out of him. To the point to where she busted my fucking head open and I was bleeding everywhere, I was knocked out and um, my sister had to come in and save me because my mom was just fucking going hammer time. And uh... Yeah, I think I was maybe six or seven years old at the time. My sister came in and kind of saved me. She took a bunch of the blows herself because once my sister got in between my mom and I, she, my mom just kept swinging. She was just like, whap, 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 whap. like it was a goddamn motherfucking um, like homegirl from uh, Kill Bill. What was her name? Suki or whatever. Just, just throwing the chain around like a motherfucking ninja and shit. My sister was able to buy me some time to like get to my senses because I was out. I was knocked out for a couple seconds. And uh, I was able to like ski daddle and maneuver my way through and escape. And that was uh, quite the ordeal that I went through with her. But that was like a normal thing. I mean, we're talking about a woman that... When I... I told you guys about the story when I fell off the slide and I broke my arm. She looked at my arm and like was like, Oh great, it's broken. And then just kind of like threw it down. On my side. That was clean. Yeah, so yeah, that actually happened. I had to I didn't get stitches. She didn't want to take me to the hospital or anything. When she came to her senses. Um I ended up getting uh she super glued my head back together. So you know. Yeah, that happened. Like I said last show, my mom had had multiple personalities. She had like at least five or six of them. And four of them fucking hated me. So. But it is what it is, you know. And since it's Mother's Day, I figured, hey, I'll tell some stories about good old Ma. And then, like, you know, when you get older, and, you know, shit affects you a little more. Uh, yeah, I was in, um, went to Juvenile Hall, and while I was in Juvenile Hall, they put you in a place called a placement. It's kind of like camp, you know, but you're under, under the fucking state's control and shit. It's a little less lax than, I don't know, camp. But it's, you know, it's like a placement. Group home, it's, it's more crazier than a group home, but less than a camp, I guess you could say. Anyways. Uh, while I was there, I had to go see a shrink. And, um... The fucking, I told the shrink some stories. And the shrink was like, what the fuck? So, she called my mom in for a session. And... She made me confront my mom. And it was like this big ordeal. And uh, after the fact, my mom resented me for telling the psychiatrist stories about her fucking me up. <laughs> Choke slamming me through the cement and shit. But. 
but yeah. This batch is perfect. We can ship and it then, whenever um, you like. Last time I seen her, last all, um, uh, we were, we went to my grandmother's funeral. And, uh, I had no real way to get out there or anything, so I had to hitch a ride with my ex-wife and shit. Uh, yeah, talk about being alienated from your own family. Yeah, like, <laughs> it was funny. So my ex-wife had teamed up with my mom and my sister to tell the whole family, basically, that I was a hardcore um, pill drug addict at my grandmother's funeral. I see we have some fresh customers. And then when I, when I fronted on my mom about it, especially considering, you know, how the situation was and stuff, she just basically told me to get over it. Good. They're all you dead, have dead to me. <laughs> bon. I haven't talked to any you of them are, since. Uh, ready to drive, I just have a I big guess. resentment towards our clients, uh, uh, are her and women that are like her. I see it, I, like I see, and I, I know a lot of women. And these customers when I'm, that's probably why my my relationships are so fucking They're shitty, and they just roller coaster rides. And the only girls that I get along with, or I women that I get along with, are. Chosen well. have had similar These, kind of uh, upbringings where their parents were just as fucked up as mine. I can't really fault my dad because he fucking yes. was working three jobs. You know what I mean? But when he was home, like, he was doing the dad thing. So I, have, I have to give dad props for that. But... Man, my mom, dude, she... Like I said, she had like five or six personalities, man. They're fucking crazy. <laughs> She, she would tell me some shit like, hey, let's go to um, fucking Kmart. Because that was a spot back then, Kmart, right? Let's go to Kmart. Um, I need to pick up a couple things. You can go down the toy aisle and, and pick out a new G.I. Joe or Transformer. And then, you know, we'll come home. And I'm like, fucking sweet. Dude, we would go there. She would walk in the door. She'd be like, all right, I'll meet you right back over here with your toy. And I'll make sure you come back here in like 10 minutes. I'd be down the toy aisle, be looking, pay, waiting patiently, this and that. She would fucking leave me at the store. She would leave me there. She would fucking bone out. And then, and then come back like an hour or so later. And then have me called on the intercom while I'm chilling. Because I didn't know where else to go or what to do. So I would just chill in the toy aisle. Just, just chilling. And, um... She would call me on the intercom instead of knowing where I was at. Knowing that I was in the toy aisle, she would call to embarrass me. And I'd come running. And then she would make like a scene. Where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. Blah, 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 blah. Thank you, blah, 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 blah. Super mom and shit. Fucking Terry. Oh, I used her real name. My bad. I stopped calling her. It's funny because I stopped calling her mom and I would just call her by her real name. And I know that would fucking irritate her. that dude fucking asshole mom you know it's not like I wanted her to be overprotective or anything like that but dude it was
Come on. Oh, really? You're gonna stop? Alright, come on, horse. Let's go. Sometime today. Alright, there we go. Now we're cooking with Chris Ghost. And like, so after Juvenile Hall and everything, um, I started hanging around. You know, fucking tagger crews and shit. You know, it was like tag banging. I don't know if you guys remember that term back in the day. Just remember getting into it with some fools at the mall, and then like, you know, I stabbed one in the shoulder with a pencil and. Fucking that weekend, I went clubbing, and when I came home, my mom had all my bags packed and was like, "Some fools came here and they pointed a gun at me and this and that." She was all genuinely scared. And I think that was like the one time I felt bad, you know. And then she sent me to Washington, and I lived on the res with my sister. Fucking crazy. And then it was crazy, so I was living with my sister for a while and then she ended up getting an apartment in West Seattle. And I uh, was dating some dude. He's a douchebag. Fucking kinda looked like Tom Selleck. But um him and I got into an argument one night about something, dude, and I remember I took a bat at him. My sister tried to, like, get in between us. When I swung the bat, I accidentally hit her. <laughs> I felt so bad, dude, that I ended up taking off and started living with a teammate. No, nah, no time, buddy. Started living with a teammate um, on the hockey team that I was on. And um, his parent, his dad was this fucking DEA agent and shit. But his mom was nice, man. And um, you know, I would I would tell them stories about what was going on and what why I was up there. And, and then one day, um, my mom came up to visit to see like where I was staying at, and how things were. But she was such a fucking just a total cunt to the people. They were just being nice, like. You know, they didn't have to take me in, dude. She was just like, you know, you're not going to get any money out of me, so don't think that, you know, while he's staying here, you're going to get money from me. It's just a real fucking bitch about everything. And like it was crazy because the team, the the parents that I was living with then, they ended up telling the the hockey association what was going on. And dude, because I was fucking half native and shit, they fucking put me on a program and because the the place that ran the hockey association was through like the bingo halls and stuff up there. It was cool. I was away from her again for a while, which was cool. And then when I came back to California, um, when the season was over, I came back to California for the summer. Basically, she was like, oh, okay, here's your room. Don't try to unpack too much because you're out of here in a week. I don't know where you're going to go or what you're going to do. I just don't want you here. 
So she, like, I come back from Seattle and she kicked me out. <laughs> She was a fucking real, uh, real hard case. Anyways. Oh, yeah. Good times. I said that it's good times were fucking few and far between that's for sure I mean this woman you beat me while I was teething because I, I was keeping her awake at night yeah <laughs> mm-hmm a reasonable uh, trader. Now he's bust my dad's balls like, what the fuck did you see in her? Like, how was I even born? <laughs> mm hmm. agréable. Now we wait. But then you look at the women that my dad dated, like, after my mom, and it's just like, oh, okay, he kind of like, he like that particular style of woman, I guess you could say. Jewelry that'll probably, that'll probably take it to that next level. I'm flowing. Do, 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 Good do, news. Do, do, do. We have some new clients. I see. Oh, yeah. Damn, I didn't even introduce ghosts, man. How rude am I? Sitting here talking trash about my mom, and I didn't even introduce the fucking most awesomest female in my life. My virtual reality horse. Ladies and gentlemen, now stepping on stage, a ghost. Come here, you sexy bitch. Oh, ghost is the best. Also, new players, if you're looking for a horse or whatever, um, I recommend Mustangs. Just because they're more, like, overall, the best rounded about breed is, in my opinion. You can go the way you want. Um, I know that Dank likes the Turkomans. Um, Stax likes the Arabian. Um, I can't stand the Arabian. Um, the Turkomans to me are too skittish, and everybody says all the horses are the same and whatnot, but I don't think so. I think the Mustangs have the best temperament. Um, they're, they're the most trustworthy. Like, they get you through the shit. Um, Ghost here has a custom-made Nagadosha saddle. Um, the best thing to do for your saddles is to get the trader rolls so either i believe the trader roll or the bounty hunter roll and you unlock the the nagadoshis through those the nagadoshis is through the trader and i believe the upland saddle is through the bounty hunter yeah. those are the two saddles that are the best saddles as far as giving your horse the stats that or whatever I basically have do I have a I have a plethora of horses in my stable different breeds and I'm telling you right now like for me the Mustang is preferably my favorite horse ghost right here is the best 
I usually, if I get a horse for the looks or whatever, I usually just pay for the gold. I get a gold horse, gold bar horse. And uh, I usually make those the females because they're for looks anyways. They're the prettiest. It just so happened here that Ghost ended up being the all around supreme dream. She's just so awesome. Oh, jewelry. Shit. Alright, hold on. Get up over here. Jury. I'm gonna worry about this fucking guy right now. There we go. Jury. <laughs> okay. Right on this guy's path. Forsaken L. Oh, cool. They're all like right here. He's got a nice horse. Oh, I think this shit is in this fucking cave right here. Oh, maybe not. I think it's in the cave, dude. Way to remember how to get down there. <laughs> Alright. Uh, this isn't gonna be good, dude. Because I have to go, like, right here. Let's see if I can make it. Nope. I'm not gonna make it back up there. See if I can jump it. Nope. Nope. I'm gonna die. Yep, I'm dead. Alright. Well, that was fucking awesome. remember how I did it.
Come on, dude, jump up there. Serious? Fuck. This is how I want to start the stream, but. Yeah! Oh, you know his butt sore. You know his butt sore. Is that a wolf? I swear I heard a wolf. Stacked up on each other right here. Well, let me let me whip this out. No 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 no. that shit, huh? It's not gonna work, current's too strong. Fuck man, I got pinched. There we go. Fuck it, let's just go for a ride. Woo! Put your feet out in front of you, brah. Put your feet out in front of you. <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know, survival tip of the day, if you're ever in the rapids or anything like that, just try to keep uh, your feet out in front of you with your legs bent so you can take the impact off the rock and kind of push off the rock with your feet. And that survival tip brought to you by Warpath.
No, come on, man. You were like right there, dude. Fuck off. We'll try it one more time. There we go. Oh. Almost went off the cliff skis there, skis. See if we can get this one first. Yeah, this one's in a little box right here. Should take care of that. Should be the third jury. A little collectible there, and then we'll get the rest off of dead guys. Sucks, dude. I had to start my dailies all over again, like a new kid. She's such a good girl. Fucking rattlesnake. Easy girl, easy. Yeah, better run. Fucking rattlesnake. Easy, 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 easy. Here, here's some hey girl. Shoot. All right, let's, let's check out. Let's check out these. Uh, Daily Baileys. What are we at now? Four out of nine. All right, we're cooking with Crisco. Probably want to do those. Those two will get done here in the next run. Get done here in the next run. Seventy-six. Ooh, we need a um. We need a random bounty. Like a um, you see. I usually haven't taken any of those lately, but maybe we'll bump into one on the way back to camp here. We'll follow the gray fox. All right. Uh, poachers. Trip, I got you. Nice. I meant to do that. All a part of my plan. Just like that, that little slide there too. All right, let's see what we're up against.
Oh, I'm setting this fool loose. Is that a fucking bear? let nature run its course, you know what I mean? <laughs> you stay the fuck away from me, bear. And that poacher mission was brought to you by Array Gaming. As we hit the 60 minute mark, I want to pay respects and give a big shout out to my sponsor, Array Gaming. Go over to ArrayGaming.com check out all the gamer mer merch for you or the gamer in your life. If you use code Tomahawk between now and Wednesday, you'll get 10% off your order. All orders over $75 get free shipping. That's ArrayGaming.com. Use code Tomahawk. All right. Let's go get these fucking Pinkertons while we're out here. Just getting all that XP while we can. Man, that was so tight. Letting the motherfucking bears go and just watching them just do the damn thing. That was sick, dude. Come on, baby girl. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. There we go. that way. Let's go back this way and double back. Hopefully they'll still be there. Shit, yeah, it's a fucking we're gonna we're gonna hit him anyway so <laughs> Steph says that's a big bar yep big bar
You know what else, too? I had a couple of hockey mobs that were really, really, really cool. I know I gave a shout out to Lau's mom, Candy, but I gave a shout out to uh, Dank's mom, Winnie. We're always making us sandwiches before a tournament. Uh, my boy David's mom, Kathy, for uh, always having my back. And then Stax's mom. Stax's mom was. She was awesome, dude. She was the only lady that really stuck up for me when um, uh, came down to like suspensions and stuff for hockey out here. Cause I was in, I was getting suspended a lot, lots of fights. So yeah, that's like three, three hockey moms right off the top of my head. Max's mom, she wasn't to be messed with. She was a little lady, but she, she spoke with a fucking loud voice, that's for sure. <laughs> I, I should have been, like, banned from a couple of leagues. She, she fucking went to bat for me, man. So. Damn, look how filthy my fucking pistol is. Oh, that's right, I was fucking swimming. I don't know if I ever told this story about my room. Alright, so... Uh, there was a bus stop up the street from our house. Where you know I lived. This is back in um, third grade. I was in the third grade, I think. And uh, at this bus stop, there was these twin brothers, and they were fucking spoiled as fuck. Um, these these are the kind of kids that. I mean, they lived in the apartments. You know what I mean? So they weren't like that well off, but their the, their parents always made sure that they had like all the newest shit. So back in the third grade, the thing the thing in the third grade back then was like um, these fucking transformer watches. So it was a watch, but it was a little tiny transformer. And you could like spin it, take it off your little wrist thing, and then you could play with it as a transformer and had a watch on it, a little digital watch, and you know you could transform it back and then put it on your wrist. So these, these these kids were like that. They had all the, like the new toys and shit, all the hot, all the hotness. They had all the hotness. Anyways, one of the big things that these motherfuckers like to do is, um, the way that particular bus driver would load the bus would be, people that were first in line, you know, you load the bus to the back and then pack it all the way to the front. You know what I mean? So that's the way we did things. Well, all the cool kids sat on the back of the bus. You know what I mean? And it was whoever was like the posse leader of that particular would get that spot. Well, these two motherfuckers, they had their own little crew. And they would always get first in line, no matter what. We would get there early as fuck. And these fools would still be there early, like, wait. And I remember, dude, this is crazy. I, remember, I don't remember a lot, but things I remember, it's funny, they irritate me. This kid would always lick his lips. And he has such bad chap lips that, like, the chapness went above and beyond, like, his lip line. That's what I remember most about this fucking kid. I can't remember his name or anything like that. But I remember he had blue eyes and chapped-ass fucking lips. Anyways. There was one day where I got there first. I was like, fuck yeah, look, look at my guy, look at him fist pump, fuck yeah, that's basically how it was, I was first, <coughs> excuse me, I'm standing there, I'm waiting, I must have been waiting maybe about a minute, and then these fools come around the corner, and they see me standing there, immediately, immediately, 
they start talking shit to their mom. Oh my god, mom! Blah, 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 blah. Like just going ape shit crazy, and then you kind of figure out why they always had the hotness, because they were they were the kind of kids that would just bitch and complain until the mom was like, "Fuck it, all right, fine, whatever, here." So these kids they start complaining and shit. So she walks up to me all calmly and shit. She goes, "I know what you did." And I looked at her and I was like, you know, what did I do? Mind you, I just told you a bunch of stories about my my mom beating the fuck out of me. And I had bad, like, um, self-awareness issues already. So I was always like, you know, I was a scared cat. Like, oh my God, ah! You know, basically that's how my reflexes and actions were as a kid, you know? So when you got a parent who's like hovering over you and like kind of berating you for something that you didn't even do or anything so she basically was like making up shit saying that i did something and that she was reporting me for it just so i could get out she made me so upset that i i left i went back home i said fuck school i'm running back home i'm telling my mom right that this lady's fucking with me so i run home the door was locked and shit I had to knock on the door. My mom answers the door all fucking tired and, you know, grouchy because she had to wake up and answer the fucking door. So I tell her, I was like, son lady, and I'm pointing, and, you know, I'm a fucking frustrated and flustered, and some lady up at the bus stop, and la 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 la, and I'm, I, you know, I didn't do anything wrong, and uh, I'm like, you know, pleading my case to my mom, thinking that, okay, she's gonna have my back, right? Dude, she says, just stay home. Watch cartoons. It was one of her nice personalities. You know, she was like, all right. So she made me breakfast. We watched fucking game shows in the morning. And then that's when I realized what, what fucking soap operas were. Because that's what she would watch. Game shows and soap operas. And then she would do the mom thing. And then I'd come home and, you know, I'd go to baseball or whatever. Anyways. So the next day, right, I'm thinking, oh, yeah. Mom's just gonna go down there and put the hammer on this bitch, right? Get dressed, go, you know, get ready to go to school. We roll up, and she's like, which one was it? Like, to all these kids in line with their parents and shit, like, so she gets out. My mom was gangster, dude. She gets out, and she goes, okay, well, which one was it? And I point at the mom. And, of course, fucking Tweedledee and Tweedledum are at the front of the line, of course. So she walks right up, and she goes... Where the fuck do you get off? And like, you know, doing the typical mom thing. You know, where do you get off? Tell them my kid, this and that. The lady pulls a fucking, I don't know what you're talking about. She's like, I don't know, blah, 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 blah. Acting like, you know, this, that, and the other thing. She's like, you know, all I know is, is that your son causes a lot of problems. There's always fights. Um, I told him that I was going to report him for, you know, disciplinary, this and that. And he went home. So she, instead of just being like, well, fuck you, bitch. No, no, uh-uh. Instead of being like that, she turns around and goes, you fucking liar. Literally grabs me by my throat, picks me up in the air, and fucking undertakers me right there in the motherfucking sidewalk. Boom! Choke slam. Then starts stomping me out, calling me a liar and how I embarrassed her. Yeah how, you know, I'm a fucking disgrace to the family and this and that. Just stomping me the fuck out, dude. And then kicking my ass all the way back to the car. And my sister was in the car like, God damn, because my sister came too thinking that my mom was going to need fucking backup. Um, what should I kill this? Let's kill this. Oh, right in his booty. Where you going? Where you going? You don't going nowhere. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> So, my sister's in the car. She's like, oh shit. She's got this look on her face. I'm fucking bleeding and shit everywhere. My mom throws me in the car. She takes me to school. She tells me, get the fuck out. I get out of school. And now I'm walking around the school. Um, 
you know, all fucked up and shit. I was concussed, everything. You know, my mom had just fucking choke slammed me through the fucking, through the fucking same man. Like JR in WWE and shit. Back out, okay? Back out! Shit, this choke slamming through the same man. You know, basically that's how it was. So, I go to class. I try to play it off. And, uh, I'm concussed and shit. And uh, my teacher's looking at me, and I'm all like, you know, fucking. So, um, she, she calls the principal. And they call me in the office. This is the same principal that used to beat my ass, mind you. I just told that story last last show. The story had uh, the principal giving swats. So uh, I go in the principal's office, and he was like, "Hey, you know, can you do me a favor and like, you know, lift up your shirt?" And then so I went in there and I lifted up my shirt, and I had I had stomp marks and shit on me, like my mom's footprints was all over me and shit, and I had bruises and stuff all over me and. Um, principal was like, all right, you know, put your shirt on, and he's like, go and um, go hang out with the nurse. So I was like, all right. So I went and I hung out with the nurse, and she was showing me how to fucking like keeping me distracted and shit. So then the sheriff shows up, and then the sheriff asked me to go back in the principal's office, and then they asked me, you know, like, hey, can you can you go down to your underwear and shit? And I was like, fuck, you know, there's a fucking cop telling me, I don't know what else, fuck, I can't say no, you know what I mean? I'm like, fuck it. So I go down my underwear and I show them all my marks. I got, they're all over me, dude, like I'm saying. She fucked me up. So, um, cop was like, oh, okay. And uh, I guess some of the parents, they had called the school and called the cops on my mom. So about an hour later, my dad shows up, and I'm like, whoa, that's fucking crazy, because, um, you know, Pops worked fucking an hour and a half away. So he would wake up at, like, 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning, and he would be at work by, like, 6, you know? So, um, he came back home, and I was all fucked up and shit. He was like, he felt bad, and he was like, come on, son, and... <clears throat> Excuse me, I had to take a little sip wet my whistle anyways um tells me come on son let's let's go home and you know figure things out so we go home we get to the house and um my mom's not there so my dad's like okay she's probably still in jail right my fucking mom called one of her friends my mom was part of this little crew they were all like whiner wino bitches you know what i mean like i think about it they were all like overweight drank wine and just talk shit and you know they were fucking chicken heads as far as i'm concerned anyways one of her, the one of her friends they rallied up and they bailed her out of jail so it just so happened is my dad and i are packing up some clothes because my dad's like hey let's just pack up some shit and then we'll go stay somewhere and then when shit blows over we'll figure it out so we're packing up some gear and shit. I'm loading up my little fucking G.I. Joe backpack. And um, here comes my mom in the house. And she's fucking pissed off. You know, and she starts screaming at my dad and I. That it's all our fault. That I'm a little piece of shit. And then I, I caused her to go to jail. And I ratted her out. And this and that. And she was like, get the fuck out of my house. Like, she kicked my dad and I out of our house that he got through the money from when he was in the Air Force. So, like, she tried to say it was her house, but it was really my dad's house. I don't know. Anyways. So, for, like, two weeks, we had to go live with one of my dad's uh, Air Force buddies. And that was a fucking... That was a hoot. Because his kids were little badasses, and they were doing shit, and then they were blaming it on me. So it was like, no matter what happened or where I went, and that's basically my life story ever since, no matter where I go or what I do, I'm that guy that's, you know what I mean? Um, one of my buddies I used to ref with, he, he called it out the best. He was like, we could be at a club with 3,000 people, music going and everything, 
And these motherfuckers will have a bad night and they'll come in and they'll look around and they'll be like, that guy right there! And they'll point right at me. <laughs> and I'm over, you know, like just, I'm in the corner just getting my freak on, like, doosh, 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 you do, boom, 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 you know what I mean? And next thing you know, I'm surrounded and shit, or like, you know, it's just by me, my face just offends people but for some reason. It's just the way it goes. That's why I've been in so many fucking fights in my life, dude. Hilarious. Anyways. Yeah, that was another little fucking fun little story about mother. Later on in life. I hope you beat those. Oh, Steph says, I hope you beat those two kids down. And then their mom. <laughs> no, just uh, after a while, like, because I never really seen those kids much after that, after that incident, because. Uh, um, once everything blew over and everything, I, ha I had, uh, I started going to a different school. I had to go to a, a crazy school because they were going to hold me back in the third grade because I kept missing so many days of school. Um, there was a lot of days, um, my buddies and I, we built a fort in the field because we were, you know, we were, we were living in the high desert and it was really rural back then. Not like it is now around our houses where we got, you know, apartments and houses and communities. I mean, right across the street, they're building a new community right now. And um, on the way to school, we would walk to school, you know, sometimes at the one school we went to. So there would be times where we would miss the bus and we would say, fuck it. We, 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 we built ourselves a fort on our way to school. So we had like a little halfway point. And uh, there would be days, man, where... You know, I'd be all black black and blue, bruised up, scarred up, and I didn't want to go to school because I didn't want anybody to see, you know, what I looked like or anything like that. So I would just go and hang out in the fort all day, um, you know, look at nudie magazines and shit. And fucking, when I'd see the kids walking home from school, I would go. And then, you know, I'd, I'd tell my sister about it. My sister... Back then, my sister was really, really cool and understanding. It wasn't until basically I, I bapped her with the fucking bat going after her boyfriend that day that she, she you know, started doing her thing. And then, you know, her, her relationship with my ex-wife is just fucking weird. You know, it's just fucking weird. Bonjour, patron. They're like a fucking posse. It was for a fact I know my sister loves the cock. I would swear that her and my ex-wife were fucking gay lovers. Eighty-five percent complete. Go in here and hang out for a little bit. Good to see you. I guess we could go do a legendary real quick. Legendary hunt. No end to your kindness, sis. You're just trying to impress those lowdowns, ain't you? No, what a fucking... Got us a what a Debbie Downer show, right? Motherfucking Mother's Day stream. I tell you what. And I started the stream off by, by talking about good moms, and I got emotional talking about those particular women in my life. Stefan, I know you too well. I've known you like a year just through chatting. I can tell you're an awesome person and stuff. But, you know, after talking about... You were the first person I talked about this morning. And after talking about you and, you know, just thinking about the other women that I know that are out there just fucking doing it. Gets me choked up because, um, you know, I never really had that. So. Oh, get over it, man. Fuck, get over it, man. Up. Oh. Being a fucking pussy. That's the other little voice in my head. That's a voice in my head. 
shit. Um, I was having a bad night a couple weeks ago. And um, I woke up in my sleep speaking Russian. Like screaming at somebody in Russian. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, and I, I do speak Russian, by the way. Like, but it was just weird. To, like, catch myself by waking up and I'm, like, in the middle of a sentence fucking cursing somebody out in Russian. It's really fucking funny. What do we got? Yeah, just getting ready for this week. Um, I may start doing um, a tutorial on Tuesdays um, to help new players out. I'm going to call it like Tutorial Tuesday or something like that. And it'll just be a quick, um, you know, three, maybe five minute quick stream video. And then I could clip it and edit it and put it up on YouTube to try and help um, newer players out that are joining Red Dead. Because I'm seeing that a lot of the OGs that I followed when I was coming up to try and learn this game, they're all moving on to different games. Oh, excuse me. Whew, excuse me. Pardon me. I know, man. I don't like to do, like, coughs or sneezes or anything on the microphone. That burp just came up out of nowhere. I had a... um breakfast burrito this morning before the show and whoo it's fucking creeping now too much salsa you know what i mean <laughs> just kidding all right well he's got a couple minutes um I think i'm gonna get on my horse here and let's go see what she's doing hi y'all crazy bitch but you fucking so good i'm on top of it i'm not oh Uh, I, didn't, I didn't even realize there was cargo stored on my horse. I guess I put that. So yeah, I I was gonna see if Stacks and them wanted to come in the last part of the show, but it looks like they're all playing butt pirates. I try to play that game. I try to get into it. I just you know I I can't. I just can't. But then again, other people tell me, like, I don't understand how you can play a sports game without just, you know. So, uh, oh, by the way, I am, uh, you're, you're listening to the winner of the NH, NHL 21 EA Sports. Hold on. EA Sports Coach of the Year. Yeah, last night I ended up finishing my um, my little NHL 21 season, and they they gave me Coach of the Year. I didn't play one game. <laughs> James, ready. Steph says. See, I'm a mama bear. You treat people the way you want to be treated, but some people are just assholes. I never say not my kids because anything is possible, but my kids know I will have their back if they are right. And squally, they make the right choices, so I spend lots of time with my kids so I know their morals. Which is, you know, which is on point. You know, I'm, I'm not saying my mom didn't teach me, like, good from bad or right from wrong. It's just, when she did it, she did it with a fist or an object of some kind, whether it was good or bad. I mean, I found $5 in the gutter one day, and I came home, so I was excited. I was like, Mom, Mom, look, I found $5. Dude, she punched me in the face, basically knocked me out, and when I kind of came to... 
she felt bad and was like, okay, well, let's go get you a toy and I'll add $5 to the $5 that you found to, like, try to make up for the shit that she did. So, that was just, you know, the way it was, man. The way it was for me. Like I said, man, I keep saying it. She had multiple personalities, so... Five or six personalities and four of them fucking hated me, so... Steph says, I don't know what that squally was. <laughs> she should have had your back. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't. She should have, but she didn't. I have finished this batch. We can sell it when you like. So, what shall we create? Loretta. Loretta Devereaux. Alors, this batch is parfait. Now we must go. But I must warn you, we can afford no mistakes with this. Purity. That is uh, what they are paying the big price for. And that is what Marcel has created, is it not? I have not slept. I have not rested. I have stopped at nothing to create these little jokes of heaven, eh? But now, relax and uh, enjoy your trip. Oh, good old Frenchie. Always buys me time to snap a quick bong load and take a sip of coffee. I'm actually kind of excited to do the tutorial Tuesday um, little things there because I know I'm like I do a little bit of that each stream but if I could just make a short video to try to get it out help out newer players lately man I've been helping out lots and lots of newer players I've been giving away legendaries to like the lowest player in the lobby and Um, the other day I gave this kid a, a coyote, and I told him, the legendary coyote, and I told him, yeah, just, um, skin it, sell it to Gus, and then buy the garment off of Gus. And he's like, who's Gus? And I just started laughing, I was like, oh shit. So I had to explain to him who Gus was, and he wasn't that far into the game yet. And then about five minutes later, he sends me a message and says the grifter fucking blew him and his horse up and ruined the fucking coyote pelt. So I just was like, oh, this poor kid is not having a great fucking experience right now. Yeah. 
fucking tomahawk, bitch. Oh shit. Oh, I ain't gonna make that five minute mark. That was sick though, huh? With the fucking tomahawks. Okay, hey. You're never gonna make it! 20 seconds! trick with the mat so it holds nine rounds in the cylinder and then it has the option to flip it for the shotgun right giving it basically a 10 round gun then the mauser holds 10 rounds in the inner magazine which is felt fed by a clip that's right the mauser is a clip gun Want to learn more about clips and magazines and the differences? Be sure to check out my boy R.E. Ermy on Mail Call. I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. Gunny will tell you the difference between a clip and a magazine. Anyways, um, there's an option in the settings. I'll probably go through that in a couple of weeks on one of the tutorials um, where it automatically flips from shooting regular pistol rounds to shooting the shotgun round. So it gives you that 10 round no matter what. Distance on it is, you know, questionable, but it, it's able to still give you that 10 and 10 and you get the credit with the revolver anyway, so you're, you're still working on those um, awards. I wish I would have known about that kind of stuff when I first started playing, because then I might have been more adept at like evening it out a little more, but See what we got. Hold on, I'm having weird calm issues there. Sorry about that. Pippity poppity and all that shit. Seven. We need two more. We need fucking two more, kid. Alright, so we do need to get this fucking five minutes left. I don't think I'm gonna do it here in the next 30 minutes or so. Oh, 20 minutes. It's gonna take 40 just to make it. Trader, eight nine. You know, we could do a bounty. Just come back, kind of do our own thing. Kind of close it out. fucking spilled my guts for like two hours. <laughs> I had a neurologist say that when you get concussion, you feel um, the end of the ripple effect within like the 10th year and I feel like 
I want to say maybe my first, you know, couple of concussions growing up were from my mom when I was very, very young. And I think it attributed a lot to um, the way I was uh, growing up, especially as a teenager. Your hormones are all fucked up as is when you're a teenager. You can add you know, post-concussion issues on top of that. It starts to paint a broader picture of what uh, you know what what someone went through and shit. Stop already here. You want a motherfucking? I haven't given you a peppermint in a while here. Peppermint. There you go. Yes, yeah, observer. Yes, queen. Queen. Yes, you are. Fucking roadkill kid. Skirt! Alright, let me go in here and make a new batch. Then we'll go see what crazy bitch is doing. Maybe that'll take us to the end of the show there. Try to get this uploaded up on YouTube. I don't usually do YouTube shows on Sunday, but I figure since it's Mother's Day and I didn't really have anybody, um, we'll like as a special guest or anything, we'll, we'll we'll put this on there today. So I'll probably be up on YouTube at around five o'clock. Uh, see if I can get a, a notice to the, to the moms I gave shout outs to. Dang, look at that. What has this place been raided? It's fucking empty, kid. Maybe we'll just go now. We'll just go see. Kind of a waste of time. Well, actually, let's just go. In. I'm always conflicted with my thoughts. <laughs> You're staying in a goddamn cave all the time. Uh, isolate yourself. That's what happens, boy. Shut up. Tell me what to do. I live my life. Hey, hey you there you are. On that batch, no? Yeah, we did. Good job. Friend. I have some ideas. I have ideas as well, Oof, my friend. As you wish, but it can be made Oof. to be cheaper, huh? Oof. Uh, uh, we go big money. We got two, so yeah, we'll go big money. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. C'est agréable. Now we wait. Now we wait. Now we wait, skis. All right, now let's go see Crazy Chick. Horseback kills.
rattles down the... There we go. Shh. There's always rattlesnakes on the other side of the tracks, man. She fucking... Thing about Ghost... She hates rattlesnakes and the fucking snow. That's two things I know for sure about Ghost. Oh, and she loves peppermint. Ghost loves the peppermint. She loves it. So good. So yeah, I'll probably do a show Tuesday, a little tutorial for newer players. And then, uh, I don't quite remember a lot of when I first started playing this. Remember like, just give advice of what guns to get, what guns not to get. My opinions on the guns. I keep hearing about it's probably the mostly what I'll do is. Leading my poor friends. Turns out it's you. It is um like gun tutorials, and then cards, ability cards. Those were like the two things that I always wondered about when I was starting to play. What cards should I use? What guns should I use? You know, and then you just got to the point where I, I was making so much money and I was like fuck it I'm gonna buy everything and I'm gonna do everything so much activity hidden away in this land their voices are nearly deafening let's see what we got here Cross I keep fox, hearing stories gator. about this unusual fox very beautiful maybe one you can track down for me uh, let's see we got about 15 minutes? You think we could do the spa cougar in 15 minutes? Do the cougar. It yields more. I know I shouldn't generalize, but the vole is really a rather fickle creature. Don't you find? Best friend one day, a stranger the next. I mean, I see it as a sign of intelligence more than anything else. No? Anyway, a conversation for another day. I just heard some livestock in New Austin were wiped out by a vicious predator that sounds to me like it could be a rare Sapa cougar. Do you think you could go and check it out for me? If we keep working together like this, we will have a breakthrough. I know it. All right, here's what we're gonna try and do. We're gonna try and bust a super speed run on the Spaha Cougar. I had to put a little pause in there because if I would have said that fast, it, it, it would have been all fucked up. Considering I'm playing with like one eye right now as is. So let's try to speed run it. Hopefully it'll be one of the versions that I know. The Virgin! Found more Puma shell this morning. We gotta put a hunting party together. Good girl, good girl, good girl. You're telling me? Ain't no fence strong enough to block out these mountains. Fucking looking somewhere else. Damn it. I'm so sorry. I know you hate me. 
Jimmy. Girl, you know I love you. Girl, you know it's true. Ooh, 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 I love you. Yeah, that's right. I did some Millie Vanilli right now. What the fuck? You got a problem with that? You want to fight about it? No big whoop. <laughs> Uh, fucking Millie Vanilli, yo. Oh yeah, let's see. Blue over here. Where there's smoke, there's fire, motherfucker. Oh, wait, that's fucking light yellow up there. I need to find the fucking clue before I go up there. Jared's face, bro. What's up, buddy? You've seen better days, huh? one I got. Don't, don't fucking let me down, baby. Yeah, look at your fucking dead ass. Dang, his mane's still blowing in the wind. It's a pretty fresh kill. What are you doing? Look at the clue. Don't rest, you fucking idiot. Go straight for the fucking. These cocksuckers are over here. It is a fine catch. I've had finer, but this will fetch a good price. Jingling over here? Oh, hell yeah, dude. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, and Homeboy had fucking birdie eggs on him. Nice. Throwing up them goose eggs. Throwing up them goose eggs. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Speed run. Speed running it. Follow the pinchy poacher trail. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh yeah, try not to slam on the fucking buttons. It's a little loud. 
for watching my streams back while I'm taking a dump. And you're like, damn, I'm fucking hitting the buttons hard. So I'll try to keep it on the low, low. Seriously? Oh, and then it doesn't eat it. You cocksucker, dude. Alright, come on, baby girl. You got six minutes. Six minutes. Six minutes. Six minutes, ducky fresh around. Shoddy, shoddy. This motherfucker is just chilling right here. I'm dead. 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 God damn it. Why the fuck did it cut screaming like that? Pizza the Hut. Boom, there it is. Speed run to Baja Cougar. Wish you could take the whole thing, but gotta fucking skin it. Would have been done quicker had I not became fucking cat food for the couple of seconds that, uh, you know, I was fucking cat food. Let's 
Let's uh, throw this in the back of my fucking meat wagon. Ghost, uh, I'll see you in a second, baby. Fucking dumped off so much shit to Crips. And, um... Yeah, look at that. It's still... My wagon's still full, dude. Let's see what's in this thing. Yeah, there we go. This guy right here, this wolf, I caught this guy this morning. Oh my god. Or no, it was late, late last night. Or this morning. Anyways, you know what I mean. Alright. And that speed run of the legendary Spaha Cougar was brought to you by my sponsor. As we're getting close to the two hour mark, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to Array Gaming. Go to ArrayGaming.com and check out the brand new merch of gamer gear for you or the gamer in your life. Use code Tomahawk from now until Wednesday and get 10% off your order. All orders over $75 receive free shipping. That's ArrayGaming.com. Use code Tomahawk. I also want to give a shout out to Aqua Dulce Org Organics for uh, sponsoring today's show um, for my meds. Um, you can check them out at www.ado, capital ADO, I should say, hemp.com. That's www, capital ADO, hemp.com. That's uh, Aqua Dulce Organics. And uh, I also like to give a special shout out to Black Rifle Coffee Company. Um, you can go to blackriflecoffee.com forward slash RTD. Uh, get 20% off your orders when you join the club. Go and check out all their stuff over there. Blackriflecoffee.com forward slash RTD. So thank you to my sponsors. Thank you again to all the mothers that I gave a shout out to this morning. Uh, much love to you guys. And uh, we'll uh, see you guys again soon. All right. Stay frosty, everyone. Have a great Mother's Day. <laughs>